You can think of RenderWorks textures as images that are wrapped around objects like decals, tightly attached to the surfaces of those objects. In, in actuality, it's more complicated than that because depending on the method with which they're attached and then adjusted in their location, also called texture mapping, they can not only be attached to the surface of objects, but actually go through those objects. So that if you were to cut them open, you could see the textures go all the way through. And these textures can have all kinds of special attributes. They can be opaque. Uh, they can give the appearance of having some three-dimensionality to them. They can be made transparent. They can be made to be shiny or reflective. They can have many different features. But at the core, they are essentially images wrapped onto objects. Now we're going to look at three types of textures and different ways of applying them to, to objects. One of these textures is already included in the exercise file and we'll apply it to a few simple extruded objects. Another texture is based on a graphic image of travertine stone that we'll import into the file and then convert it to a texture and apply it to walls in the model. And then we'll create the third texture completely within Vectorworks using built-in tools that come with Renderworks and without importing any graphic images from the outside. This particular texture will be both transparent and shiny and will represent glass in the model's doors and windows. So let's open the file for this task, Building New Textures VWX. It's a, uh, it's a modified version of the file that we used for previous tasks but it has a few textures already applied. So first, let's switch to right isometric view. And let's zoom in a little bit. And now render in OpenGL. By the way, to render a scene, you can use a menu command, as we've been using in, in previous portions of, of this tutorial. But you can also use the render button up in the view bar like this. So let's take a look at the OpenGL rendering. You can see some green colored objects in the scene over here. And these are simple extruded shapes that represent landscaped areas with grass. So we'll apply a grass texture to those objects. The texture is already in the file and can be found in the resource browser right here. Now select one of the green objects and in the Object Info Palette, click on the Render tab at the top. And this is the place in the Object Info Palette where you can apply textures and control their appearance on the object. Go down to Texture, click on the drop-down box, and then choose the texture we'll use, which is called Grass. See how the texture is immediately evident on the 3D object that we selected. By the way, when you click on the texture drop-down box, you can see the textures that come already installed with RenderWorks and select from that list if you need one of them. Your own list, incidentally, might appear a little different than this one. One other thing, if you click on the part drop-down box here, you'll see that for this kind of extruded object, you can actually apply the texture to specific faces of the object if that's what you want. You can select the surface that will receive the texture, and you can even apply different textures to different faces by selecting a specific face and then choosing a texture. But for this exercise, let's leave this in overall for now. Now let's apply this texture to the other green objects. We'll use the eyedropper tool for that. In the basic tool set, which is this one, select the eyedropper tool and now press the Preferences button up on top here on the left and then select the desired setting that you want to transfer from the first object that we completed to the rest. In this case, we're transferring the fill attribute texture. Let's cancel out all these other categories here and then select texture. Click on the surface that we've already textured to pick up the texture and then up on top, click on the bucket icon and then click on the next object, make sure it highlights first, in order to pour the texture into it. You can see the texture once the file has re-rendered, and that's confirmation that you selected the, the, right, the, the right object to attach the texture to. So now continue clicking on each of the other objects to apply the texture to them as well, and make sure the cursor 
is over the edge of each of these objects in order to confirm with a highlight that you have selected the right object before you click to apply the texture. That's really important so that you can make sure you haven't selected the wrong object for the texture. We're done with the grass texture and now we'll create a stone texture and then apply it to the walls of the model. In the resource browser, click on the resource menu button here and select new resource in building new textures which is the name of the file and then render works texture. Now in the edit texture window let's give the texture a name stone and under color select image. And now the program asks you whether whether you want to import an image file or reuse one that already exists in the file. We're going to be importing an image so select import an image file and now navigate to the place where the image file is located which is the folder containing this Vectorworks exercise file and the image file's name is travertine.png so select it and then click open and you'll see the edit image color dialog box so leave things just as they are and then click OK. So now we've created a new texture we named it and then we imported an image which is the basis of the texture and now that we've done all that we need to modify the texture a little bit to make it the right size so in the size area click on the set by image button and in the set image size window grab the little round handle at the upper left side of the window it's like a little widget and then drag it over to the right edge and now that line is our dimensioning device and next to the feature size enter 3350 millimeters, 3350 millimeters, and then click OK. By the way, the right side of the Edit Texture dialog box is actually the preview for this texture, and you'll notice that it looks a little blurred. And that's because the sample size that is shown in the preview window is too small. So next to Object Size, underneath the preview window there, enter 3000 millimeters, and then hit the Tab button so now it should appear a little better. So now we're done making this texture and uh, go ahead and press the OK button. Now let's apply the texture to the building's walls or at least to some of them anyway. Let's zoom in closely to the lower right hand corner of the building so we can see it better and now select the main front wall of the building and in the object info palette click on the render tab. Remember this is where we apply the textures and control their appearance and location to some extent. First thing we'll do is to select the part of the wall that will receive our new texture. So click on the part drop down box and select right. And now we'll select the texture, click on the texture drop down box and select stone. And render in OpenGL to see the effect and make sure that everything's been applied properly. So now select the wall to the right of it and repeat the process. Uh, in the object info palette, click on the part drop down box and select right. And then click on the texture drop down box and select stone. Now these are unstyled walls and we've applied the texture to them manually. There are other methods available, such as applying textures to wall styles, to classes, and so on and these are described in the support materials but the easiest and most straightforward way of applying a texture to unstyled walls is to do it manually as we just did here. Let me talk for a minute about repetitive textures and the images that are used to create them. When you use repetitive textures such as the stone texture we used here, uh, this texture shows stone blocks applied to an entire wall. Another example of this kind of texture is, is a brick texture for brick walls. The actual image that we import does not need to be the full size of the entire wall. In our building here, for example, the front wall is more than 36 meters long. So as you can imagine, that would be a, really a huge texture. So instead, the image that we use for such a texture actually represents only a small portion of the overall size of the wall and then the texture is repeated multiple times upon the surface of the wall or, or the object that you're texturing as if it were a tile and in fact the process is called tiling. Well, let's take a look at an example. Here's a building that has a brick texture applied but only a single instance of the image used for the texture is actually shown on each wall. It's not tiled in other words. There's, there's only one tile showing 
but once the texture is fully tiled you can see it covering all of the walls without being able to distinguish where one tile ends and the next one begins and that's because the image that is used to create the texture has been specially modified along its edges especially to repeat seamlessly when it's applied to a surface as a repeating tile. So this is something you can control via the object info palette by selecting the repeat horizontally and repeat vertically checkboxes near the bottom of the palette. If these items are deselected, you will only see a single instance of the tile. If you select these checkboxes, the image tile will be distributed across a surface that you're texturing. Now, if you'd like to create your own images to use as textures that you can tile across surfaces, it's not enough to just run out with your camera and photograph a brick wall. You'll need to modify the image properly, and that means straightening out lines, correcting lens distortions, treating the edges for seamless repetition, and, and other things. And you can do this in Photoshop and in other programs also, but be aware that it can be a great deal of work and it's not always easy to do. And let me show you what I mean. Here's, here's an example of the same building we saw earlier, but with a different brick texture. And this texture used an image that was developed properly, especially along the edges. So the texture tiles across the walls nicely and you can't tell where it ends or starts. And here is the same building, but with a different texture, this one made with an image that did not receive the correct treatment. Anyway, back to our exercise. Let's take a look at the appearance of the building in perspective now that we've applied the stone texture. Switch to Save View 1 and render with the RenderWorks style Realistic Exterior Final. Now you can see that the glass in the doors and windows is opaque white instead of being transparent. So our next item is to create a glass texture for doors and windows, a texture that will be both transparent and reflective.